Hello, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to show you how to build an EC2 instance in AWS. So if you want if you're looking to build some VMs, you can do it with Vagrant, you can do it with VirtualBox, maybe even VMware Player, I think you can do it with that as well. Um, or if you've got a Linux box like a uh, Ubuntu server or an Apple, you, then you can do it on that as well. It's quite easy to have their own virtualization. Um, but today, if you want to carry on with any of my videos, or this this is part of the course I'm doing, it's like step one. Um, if you want to follow along, then this is a great video because it sets you up exactly how you need to be set up. So today we're going to be creating an AWS account. We're going to be building a VM. We're going to be logging into it with an SSH key. I'm going to show you how to do all those steps. And then we're going to have a quick look around the console, have a look at the IP addresses, the internal and external, and what that difference that means, have a look at where the firewall rules are kept and how you can add and change firewall rules and it's basically just a quick overview to set you up so that you're ready to carry on with any other videos you want to do from me or anybody else. Okay so here we go. So navigate to aws.amazon.com. I'll put all of these links in the um, description so you don't have to worry you can just flip there and cut and paste. So we're going to create an AWS account. So I already have a couple of these. Um, I'm going to hopefully set up with a new one so that we can see exact, so you'll see exactly what you will see when you do it for yourself. Your name. So use your IP address, give it a name, your name or something you like, but it doesn't matter. And we're going to verify that email address. Right, so now we need to go to, so off screen, I'm just going to check my email. Okay, it looks like this. Verify your email address. I've got a code, it's valid for 10 minutes. Let's put that code in. So, verify. Looks all right. Okay, so now a root user. So, I'm not gonna keep this account. So I'm just gonna put my own password in. Okay, so step one of five, let's carry on. Okay, so the root user is very important. The root user has absolutely complete access to all of this account and it can do anything. So you have to be very careful with who you let access this. Right, so how do you plan to use it? Just pick personal, full name, add yours. Don't need lots of... Okay, put your information in. Confirm. Now, this is the important bit. You, you have to put a credit card in. Um, but you're going to be using free tier, so it's, it's not going to be a problem. So I'm just going to go and grab a card, verify and continue. It looks like it just takes a pound or a dollar. We've got this right. Okay, now we're through. Okay, so let's go for a text message. Let's do Kingdom. So now this is just to prove who we are. So we'll get another code. There it is. So I'll do my best to obfusc obfuscate um, my details. So put your code in. Confirm. Okay, so now we're just going to have basic and free. <coughs> and then this is going to complete the sign up. Congratulations. We are activating your account. It should take a few minutes. So let's go to the management console. Going to log in as the root user. We're going to use the account that we just gave it. And then we're going to put these characters in. If you can read them, some of them are good. But whatever it says, I never ever use capitals on those things. I just put them in as I see them. If it's big or small, I don't think it matters. So console home. Let's just switch to the new console home. You may or may not get this choice depending on when you do it. You can access all your AWS services here. Um, you can choose your settings here, language and location. That's great. Brilliant. Okay, so the first thing I want to do in the console <coughs> is change our home. So I'm in Europe, in near London, so I'm going to pick a, a UK one. So in this, where it says North Virginia, 
big list of different locations and this list grows and gets bigger so there may not be one now but there will be one quite soon in your region if there isn't one already I'm going to pick just London so EU West 2 and these are all the different groups so Ireland is EU West 1, London is EU West 2 European Milan is EU South 1 Paris is EU West 3 so you get the feel of how they're divvying up their date setters and how they call them as in regions so we can say here that you know, not a lot has happened, not a lot going on, but now my region says London. That's what I personally want. And then in services, let's go to EC2. So you want this EC2 one here. So let's click on that. And then this will take you to a dashboard. <coughs> now security groups. This is the default security group. Everyone gets this. Don't delete it. Okay. If you delete this, you have to get in contact with AWS to recreate it. And this is the this is the default group that allows you to access your VM, so don't delete that. So we don't have any instances. We've got nothing here. Um, but we're going to go through this whole process now and setting up an instance. So we're going to just launch an instance. We're going to do all manual, all basic. The thing is, we can't create automated VMs until we've got something that we can create automated VMs with. So wherever you start you're always going to start with one server and that server is then going to go on and create more so for the course we're going to create an Ansible control node you know, where we're going to do all our Ansible development and where we're going to run and create using Terraform other servers so we're going to give it a name I'm going to call it Ansible um, just because that's the work I'm doing and we're going to use Ubuntu here we get a chance to see the Ubuntu server we're going to use so G2204 I'm going to go this one so free tier eligible so I don't have to pay anything I'm going to click on this one and anything else I need to do so it's 64 bit architecture x86 get x86 don't get ARM because that will cause other problems um, for, for us so it's going to be a T2 micro, which is free tier eligible. You can grow this list. You know they, they've really improved how you build these servers manually. This this is actually quite a nice format. Before you had to go through page after page after page. It wasn't particularly easy to sort of see what you had to do. But now they put it in all one place. It's one big large, big form. And it's really cool. So as you scroll down here, so T2 micro is the free tier. As you scroll down, you can see T T3 X large, four CPUs. 16 gig of memory, you know, you can see a lot of these really big servers and it tells you how much they cost an hour to run. So we're just going to pick, you know, if you want something bigger, then pick it, feel free. But for free tier, and this means a whole year of eligibility, I'm going to show you that in a second, um, then it's free. So in effect, you can have it on, it's one server on all the time for a whole year and it won't cost you a penny. So key pairs we don't have any key pairs now if you want to log in you need a key pair so let's generate a new key pair so we'll call this I'm just going to call it Ansible again RSA should be fine um, dot pem is okay create key pair that downloads straight away so let's open so we can see it here this is the key now I'm going to delete this by the time you see this video this key won't exist anymore it will be deleted so it won't be any good to you um, this is in uh, where are we going? Where do we? Uh, let me just check where it downloaded it off screen. Right, okay, so it's in my downloads folder, which is cool. So I'll show you something. I'll show you how we access that in a minute. So now that we've got our private key, that's cool. It gives you a little update. Oh, it tells you about your network. We just auto enable the. IP. You can have a static IP, but we're not going to do that, which means that every time we power cycle our server, in fact, every time we turn it off and on again, the public IP address changes, and I'll show you I'll show you that as well. So we're going to allow all traffic from SSH from anywhere. You can do it from your IP if you want, or custom. It's absolutely fine. I'm going to do it from anywhere because my IP address changes from my house, and I don't know when it changes. I don't have a static IP, and if I, try and, if I limit it to my IP address and I... And I and my IP address changes and I don't know and I try and log in it won't let me connect so and then I'll have to log into the console adjust the, adjust the firewall rule and it'll just cause problems so, so it does tell you here that this security group allows access from everywhere and that they recommend setting it to a specific IP but I'm not going to do that 
and in the storage we're just going to have um, an 8 gig storage device. So it says here you're eligible for up to 30 gig of EBS data. So we're just going to leave that at 8 for now. So just quickly, um, if you go to the free tier link I'll put in the description, this tells you everything that you're allowed on the free tier. So um, for EC2, you're allowed uh, 750 hours per month for Linux, RHEL, SUSE Linux, on T2 or T3 micros. Um, and it, you get 5 gig of storage here, you get RDS, you get DynamoDB. So have a look through this list. This list tells you everything that you get with the free tier. So back to the video. We're not going to add any more volumes. So in summary, we're getting Ubuntu 20.04 server. We're going to get a T2 micro. We've just got the, the standard security group. We've got 8 gig. In fact, I'm going to change that. Let's change 8 gig. Let's just go for 20 gig. It's part of the free tier. So I have that. And then this updates. So free tier. So in your first year, include 750 hours of T2 micro or T3 micro in the regions in which T2 micro is unavailable. Um, it's free tier per month, 30 gigs of VPS storage, 2 million IO, that's like disk operations, uh, 1 gig snapshots, and 100 gig of bandwidth to the internet, which should be more than enough for what we need it for. You know, it, I really love the free tier. They've done a really good, it's just good of AWS to do that. You know, they make a lot of money out of their other customers, and just to have a personal account where you can do this is really good. You do need to be careful with how many um, VMs you open. You know, and just be mindful of the fact that it may cost you a couple of pounds. But if you, as long as you shut them down when you're finished with them, it'll be okay. So let's launch our instance. So one thing it does is it um, it sort of registers you to the Ubuntu account as well. So that's successfully launched. Let's view your instances. Give it a refresh, and there it is. So that's popped in. So it says it's running. It's currently initializing now. What we can look at is if you just click this little button, it gives you this box that appears. Let's move that up. Um, and then what we have here is little pages of information about the server. So it tells you that it's running, and it tells you the public IP address. It tells you the private IP address. So there's a difference between these two. The private IP address, private IP will never change, but the public IP will as you shut down and reboot your servers. And you've got your public DNS. You've got your private DNS, you know, so it's all there. Um, you've got little tabs at the top that show you what your rules are. So we can see here that there's port 22 and port 443 are already open. And <coughs> this just gives you some network information. Storage, which is one block device at 20 gig. Status check, it's only been up for a few seconds, so it's not going to be any information there. You know, they provide some monitoring data. I'm not too worried about that. So the thing we're interested in is we're going to try and log into this server. So let's take this. So in a Windows box, if you open up where your key is, and then so for me it's in downloads, and here we're just going to do CMD, which is going to open up a Windows command display, and that sees us here. So now um, I think it's part of the install. So if we now just do SSH minus i ansible.pem which is the key I downloaded and then to get into a Ubuntu server we're going to use the Ubuntu um, user actually I can show you this in a different way if we just click on this connect button here it tells you the username it tells you the IP address so if you want to SSH this is what you can it actually tells you what you can use so actually let's just cut and paste this let's go here press this button to copy it, back to the command line, remove what I've just entered here, copy it in, press enter, do yes. Now logged into our VM. How simple is that? It took a few seconds to, to pick the, the option, spin it up, look at the IP address, go into how to connect to our box, and now we're on. So now on, and all, what you can see here is the internal IP address. So if you were to build other servers, inside this particular um, London zone, region, um, in the same VPC, which is like your, your own personal little data center, then you'll be able to connect to all of them via the private IP address. So that's it, you've logged in. That's great. <laughs> so if we come back um, to 
the instance. Um, on the left hand column, scroll down to security groups here. And then inbound rules, bring this up. We can see here that <coughs> it pretty much says every traffic can come in. If we edit inbound rules, yeah, so we actually see we're set up here for everything from anywhere, all traffic. I'm actually gonna, I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to touch it because that's our default rule. All right, the instances. So what I was going to show you, um, you've got all the information here about the server. We've logged in. This is great. <laughs> this is really great. So this is the start. So now you've got your server. Um, I'm going to call it a day for this particular lesson. Um, and then we're going to go in and probably do some software installation, do some setup, download some other code that we're going to need, and then move forward. One last thing I want to show you before I go is now that you've got your instance running, you can log into it. Brilliant, we're ready for the next steps, but don't leave it running. Um, we're going to be running quite a few instances as part of this course and for some of the other training that I'm going to do. So to turn it off, to save any money, to so say you're using a bigger, bigger instance, I'm going to save some money, just highlight it, go up to instance state and do stop instance. And then confirm you want to stop, and it will shut it down. And that is it. So as long as it's stopped, maybe you're on a T2 medium for something, you're a bit bigger, so you're being charged per hour. Um, you've just finished your work, shut it down, that's absolutely fine. When it does come back up again, the IP address will change, the internal one stays the same, which is fine, um, but yeah, that's just it. Just, just always do that when you finish working to save yourself some money. Cheers. So thanks for joining us. Um, you can use this for my course, my videos, or for anything else you want to do. And yeah, nice one. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.